Hello friends, this is going to be a very quick video. Uh, I'm in the middle of a dirty job right now, removing components from power supplies. And I wanna focus on removing the, uh, what it's known as the dreaded Sony glue, which uh, was widely used by uh, most of the Japanese manufacturers, if not all of them in the 1970s. Uh, what it wasn't known then is that this glue becomes corrosive over time. So it has to be removed. So um, it's Sony, I mean, Sony, this is a Yamaha, I mean, three power supplies, but um, the manufacturers mainly use it to secure larger components, heat sinks, et cetera. And this one right here, for example, for this power supply, it's in decent shape, but it can become corrosive and starts, if it touches the legs of the components, it, uh, it creates uh, problems for the circuit. Now, um, so this ball right here, I've already had the glue removed. I haven't used any chemical agents yet to clean it. I usually use either alcohol or acetone to clean this board farther. So right now this is just a, the rough uh, the finish after the glue was removed. You could see the footprint of the old glue. Um, so the goal is to remove the glue without damaging the silk screen. And the glue could be in different states. If it is... Um, scorch pretty well it sometimes comes out really easy but when it's still in uh uh retains its composition like on this boards right here this is more difficult to remove um so the goal is not to again damage the seal screen and remove the glue you could see on this board right here that uh the um the glue touched that that jumper and it started working into the through the um, thin layer of the copper. So I'm gonna have to remove that, replace it for good measures. Um, I wasn't the case here, but still. So uh, the technique I developed over the years, I just use a heat gun and a uh, something metal or hard plastic that is not very sharp, not to scratch the, the board. So what, that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing right now. So I'll be putting this phone down, get my heat gun, heat that thing up a little bit and remove it so you could see um, what it takes basically. All right, bear with me till I get a decent camera angle here. All right, let's see, focus on that. Again, I have other covers for my bench, but in this case, a um, disposable piece of carbon will have to do. Um, I do not want to leave stuff like you know falling on my bench and cleaning it so, anyways i'm using a um, pretty powerful heat gun so i have to be careful here see how it just kind of like bubbles up that glue scorches it pretty good and just gonna give it a, a good run basically this board is very hot right now so i, I can barely hold it um, all right, and this could be done with components on it, except just make sure that you're not hitting any type of styrene, styrene uh, uh, caps or anything that would be sensible to heat. All right, so now let me see if I could get the camera angle. I'm gonna have to lift this board close to the camera, but it's obviously could be done on a flat surface. It's much easier. So you can see I just, um, I use a screwdriver that is not extremely sharp. The best way is to have this down and the angle of the screwdriver not be not be steep angle so you just work this out i'm not sure how much you could see but basically uh the goal here is is not to damage that heat that uh, silk screen so you work this and usually just just think this this thing just, just comes out it's really much slower right now because i'm doing it in my camera and a little farther not the most optimal position that's one and you could just see that this thing wants to it's very sticky steel but the heat really does a number on it it just kind of rolls up like warm chewing gum and it comes out and again this is probably i want to say twice as slow as, as if I didn't have to film it and be away from the perfect position. 
group. If you use a sharp, sharper tool or an angle that is too steep, you'll be gouging the PCB, especially this older PCBs. These are not fiber boards. They're something of a phenolic type, some sort of backlight, some sort of almost like plastic. Um, back in the 1970s, uh, using what we know right, right now, the glass boards, the glass fiber boards, that are common now, they weren't common then. They were used, for example, Yamaha B1 has those type of boards, some of the locksmans, and obviously the high-end um, test equipment, such as my curve tracer, or those really nice old HP analyzers, etc. Those use those boards. Fortunately, like no other Yamaha of that time has them. Um, besides B1, no Sony, none of the Sonys actually have good boards. None of the Kennys. Kennys are horrible. Um, the Stocks has the best by far, better than anybody else. These uh, they use the fiber boards and they have copper that's thicker than it looks like they have wires. Anyhow, so here you have it. Again, the goal was not to scratch the um, um, the silk screen. If you have anything left, you could just clean it after. And for the rest of the residue, I use a little bit of acetone. So here's a little bit of an acetone brush and then this takes care of the the heavy stuff. And then ultimately at the end, I hit it with some 100% um, or 99% denaturated alcohol. So that, that takes all the residue out. I could do it acetone, but this thing is nasty. But, um, it does the job fast. Like I like uh, if I had to do this just with pure alcohol, I'd be here waiting a long time. Acetone just takes care of the most stuff. But like, be careful around like the stamps. For example, if I hit the stamp right now with the acetone, we'll take it out. So um, careful how you use this stuff. It's stinky as hell too. But it does wonders as far as like using it's really quick, effective, and it does clean really well. So. Hey, this is not finished. I'm still gonna have to hit it with some, uh, you, you could see the, the um, uh, some residue still in here, but um, basically the um, silk screen's intact, the glue is gone. And if you have anything like leftovers, you could touch them up again a little bit, this. Again, I'm just being, this is not necessary. Like as soon as you remove the, the majority of it and you're not touching any components, that's, that's the end of the exercise. Everything else is cosmetic. It has nothing to do with the uh, performance of that board and, and risks with having um, problems with uh, corrosive uh, substances later. So, um, but I just, have a serious case of OCD when it comes to stuff like this. So, anyhow, I hope uh, this makes sense. Oh, that by the way, the same thing works for the back. I'll just do this because usually I do do it over a, a tray of glass. You can use plastic with acetone. So I take the um, the main stuff off the board with acetone first, and you can see how quickly it comes out, really fast. Um, and then at the end, of course, I will um, I will clean this with alcohol. But yeah, there you go. It even dries already. Like as you, as soon as you, as soon as you're done, this thing dries instantly. So um, if you end up using acetone, as I said, be very careful. Use a respirator. I don't have one right now. This thing stinks. 
uh, but it it really cleans the boards really fast. Then at the end, if you don't want any streaks, you want the board to look like perfect, like it was brand new, just use some uh, high concentration alcohol and that will take care of all the streaks. All right, hope this was uh, useful for you guys and hope it saves you some time. I know other people use different ways of removing glue, but I've tried probably all of them, all other techniques. Nothing comes close to the effectiveness and the speed of this. So uh, velocity versus quality. <laughs> Optimal outcome is uh, using a heat gun and some sort of an object. And obviously it takes a little bit of technique. Um, I'll be lying if I said that I never scratched the, um, um, the silk screen any boards. So there you have it. All right. Talk soon. Bye.